Hi, my name is Eric Winmore. Um, I work at Intel Corporation. Um, I'm, I moved over to the Android space about three years ago. Uh, for about the previous um, 10, 12 years before that, I worked, uh, I worked uh, in uh, the high performance computing space. And so primarily I moved over with my core technologies, which is learning how to do performance and uh, uh, analysis on systems and moved that kind of learnings over into, into this new space on the Android space. And this talk is uh, about the various tools that you can do, use to find performance and power issues on Android. And I think that's a good enough intro. So first we're gonna talk about performance and power tuning on Android. And we'll talk about a few features uh, w which you might need or want uh, in a tool. And we'll talk about some of the performance tools and I'll highlight the performance tools I'm gonna to talk about. And I'm gonna talk also about uh, uh, devices that, that will do better performance analysis. And uh, then I'll, I'm gonna go over a few, one I'm gonna analyze the CPU benchmark, uh, a micro benchmark. And then I'm going to analyze the device driver issue. And then I'm gonna examine Android game. Um, each of these is different kinds of performance analysis that you can do on Android, okay? Uh, and then we'll, we'll have a summary. Okay, so performance tuning. You know, I've written a lot of, read a lot of books on performance tuning on, on various systems. They all have some sort of slightly different approach to the same thing. There's a few different uh, variations on it, but it, it mostly looks like this. So, and not everybody agrees with this part. <laughs> I, I radically do agree with it. First, you need to determine what performance you want. Some people think you just performance tune until you're done and that you've got all the speed of the system. Uh, you know, I have this team in Russia. They've been working on matrix multiply. It's three lines of code. Same team have been working on the same three lines of code for 20 years. So if you're willing to do that for your entire application, I'd be surprised. <laughs> Um, so I actually believe that it's better just if you have a performance requirement to determine what that is, and then once you determine that, you, you, know, you get a, a, a reasonably optimized benchmark system. I see a lot of people, I go in and they start off with an engineering build of the OS or a debug version of the application. They start performance tuning and I go, well, <laughs> you know, you're going to find the wrong hot spot or the wrong thing to, to optimize if you start doing that. Um, and uh, you, you get that reasonably optimized system and you establish a baseline performance. Then uh, the, the, the most likely, the most highest probability thing, the first thing you should do is probably find the code that consumes the most time. Um, that would be the hot spot. Uh, that's what I'm gonna refer to it as. And then there are all sorts of optional things you can do at that point. Um, one is to find the efficiency of that code the microarchitecture efficiency. Another might be to compare it to previous versions of performance that you got on the same piece of code. But there will be a, lots of other stuff you might want to do after the hotspot. Finding the hotspot is probably the highest priority. Then you optimize that hotspot, and uh, I believe in using the lowest effort, highest effect optimization. And I've seen lots of books written from different angles. Like some people seem to believe that the best way to optimize the system is to do performance tuning of the OS, changing various registers. And other people believe the best way is to change the processor first and, and get the newest, latest hardware. And another person believes it's to change the algorithm. I believe that the reason why people write these books is because that's their perspective. That's where they learned and it, it benefits their company best. I work for Intel, so I always think you should do hardware upgrade first, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, but that being said, I, you know, there's all sorts of optimizations you can do uh, on once you find out what that hot spot is, okay? Um, to me, the very best one is remove that piece of code completely. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> so whatever it was that was taking time, don't do it at all. That's, to me, the Cray came up with that, that uh, particular optimization or, or made it famous. But, uh, so if the performance requirement's not met, then go back to step three, 
and start this process of over. Once you've decided you've met the performance requirement, quit. And that's where some people might disagree. I, I, I believe that you have, your manager could find some other work for you, I suppose, instead of working on it forever. <laughs> okay. So, what, what do I need in a tool? Uh, well, one, I would like it to measure and report everything. That's what I would love. Uh, mostly what, you know, where I'm spending time in the system. Uh, but various metrics, the CPU metrics, the GPU metrics. Now, especially with these Android devices, it's becoming more and more important to get other SOC components, what, how much time you're spending on the audio decode unit, the video decode unit, um, all these little SOC blocks, how much time you're spending on each of them. And I want system-wide analysis. I don't want it just for a particular application. I want to look at my memory usage. I want to be able to drill to source. Uh, call stacks, so not just where I'm spending time, but how I got to that in, in my source code. I want call loops and counts, how many times I entered that function. Um, I want wait time, uh, and that includes uh, like synchronization constructs, uh, I.O., network, etc. cetera. Uh, I want to see latency. Uh, this is like uh, when I move something, or a frame, for example, a frame in a game. I want to see this frame took this long, and then the next frame took a little bit longer, right? Or there's all sorts of other kinds of latency type uh, aspects of the system. And there's a problem with wanting all this at the same time, which is what's called the observer effect. As I add more and more stuff, uh, the, the aspect of trying to get that data causes my program to behave radically different. And so I don't get the right hot spot. I get something else. So what, what we, we play a game is we try to figure out the very best way to get as much of this stuff as possible in the lowest overhead way possible. And, you, and there's all sorts of really silly tricks and interesting tricks to do it as low as possible uh, um, so that you don't have an observer effect. Okay, and maybe you can only get part of these at a time. Maybe you have to do one run to get the CPU metrics, another one to get the GPU metrics, or you have to do another run to get system-wide and a different run to get stacks. Okay, so whatever it is so that you don't have too much of an observer effect that affects the performance of the pro problem that you're trying to look at. And then finally, I want it to be easy to use. Right? I want it to be easy, one, to collect the data, and then I want it to be easy to get into a GUI and then determine what the performance problem is. Okay, so those are, those are the things I want in a tool. Uh, power tuning is something sort of what I'm going to call it. It's not, not incredibly new. It wasn't important until like 10 years ago, I would say, maybe five years ago. Um, power tuning, uh, one, I would say most people, when they first come at this problem, everybody comes out with this. You know what, I want to know, I want to identify the power being used. And I have a tool that will show you that. But that's actually, to me, similar to like top, right, or perf, perfmon in Windows. You know, it tells me when the CPU is high. And that's a level of knowing what's going on in the CPU or on the system. The problem is, is I really want more details than that. After I see that it is high, I want to know what made it high, right? So other things you might want to do is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is, this is uh, my power tuning site. So identify the power being used, or perhaps more actionable analysis is to do performance tuning. So race to idle. So you, you run the tools we just said before, get them as fast as possible. The idea is that you get the code to run quick. When it's done, it goes to sleep. Okay, so you find it's just standard performance tuning. Okay? And then find code which is not using the most efficient SOC block for execution. So, for example, audio decode. You could either do audio decode on the CPU, or there might be an audio decode unit on your on your SOC platform. And maybe it's better to do it there. Is it which, which place is it doing it? And then the an interesting thing I think that's happening is find code which does not need to execute. Okay? 
So unnecessarily using a device or the CPU. So we're, we're, uh, we're running code that has really no effect. Uh, you, this happens more often, often on a SOC block than on, on the actual CPU, but people are just running random code just because they can, okay? And unnecessarily waking up an SOC block CPU or system. So you have some sort of timer, it's periodically firing, it wakes that system up and uses some power. And if you really thought about it, maybe you didn't need to wake up that often, okay? Or maybe you could aggregate a bunch of timers into one so that you woke up, did a bunch of things, and then went back to sleep. Uh, and then another one, especially in Android, is un unnecessarily keeping an SOC block CPU or other system awake. For example, in Android, there's this thing called an Android wake lock. You specify a, a wake lock. You say, I'm locking the graphics device on. You lock it, and then uh, you unlock it a little bit later. And did you keep that awake too long, right? Or did you forget to unlock it, right? So these are things that you want to do for power tuning. So what do I want? Uh, sleep analysis. What is waking the hardware and why? What's keeping it awake and why? Utilization analysis. What is active? Why is it active? Uh, power analysis. So what's consuming power and how much? Uh, the platform perspective. Understand all the peripheral power consumers, not just uh, the CPU, but you want to see it all at once to see every single thing going on there. Um, understand behaviors driving power consumers like these wake-ups. Um, and again, same problem. I want it to be low overhead and accurate. <laughs> um, and I want it to be easy to use. And something, it's kind of important in uh, performance analysis, but I would say it's more uh, important in power analysis is seeing all the behaviors on the system at once. So you want to see what's happening on the CPU and what's happening on the audio decode unit at the same time in order to figure out um, if it should be off or on. Yes? Yeah, I put it up on the Android Builder Summit this morning. That's probably too late, but I, I was supposed to put it up last week. I know I was supposed to, but I didn't get done, so, <laughs> okay. All right, so um, I, I, I'm guessing, I'll, I'll ask the committee, I'm guessing that now that I've uploaded, they're going to make it available on the website. Right. Okay. So um, correla correlation allowing uh, uh, to see all these, and then finally a comparison feature that allows me to compare one version to another version to see um, what has changed in behavior okay, of all these things. So. So we're going to go over a few tools today. Um, I'm, hopefully, I'm going to bring up demos on all of them. Um, SysTrace is a tool by Google. This is a, a tool uh, that lets you see the whole uh, system running and all sorts of ftrace data from the, from the OS. Okay? And then I'm going, to show, I'm going to show TraceView. TraceView is an application Right from Eclipse, you write your application, and you can see your Java application profile, uh, hotspots in it. Tracer is a tool to analyze OpenGLS games, the frame analyzer, okay? Uh, and then Google has a whole bunch of tools in that SDK. They've got memory analysis tools, network traffic tools, they got this hierarchy viewer, which probably most of you who have written an APK or an Android app will, will use immediately. This one is, to me, the coolest tool ever, because I've been working on Linux and Windows for like 20 years, and this idea that when your performance is bad, that there's a bug that pops up and says, do you want to kill that app? I'm like, I really like that tool. <laughs> That's, that makes me happy, because I've never had such a tool on any other OS. Right? It's just a bug pops up and says, this is going too slow, user. Do you want to kill it? <laughs> um, then if you look into our settings under developer options on a device, there's a bunch of basic CPU stats. There's all, you'll see lots of other options that might pique your interest if you do that for any particular device. And Lint. Uh, Lint is in Eclipse, and when you're writing an Android app, it'll kind of statically recommend some code changes uh, that will affect performance. 
Uh, from the Intel side, I'm going to be going over these tools. Uh, Intel System Studio 2014 is the uh, uh, a platform or a suite of tools. And in it, um, the tools I'm going to show are Intel VTune Amplifier for Systems, Intel Energy Profiler, and Intel System Analyzer for Android. Uh, another toolkit uh, that Intel has is called the Intel Native Development Experience. And within it, it includes which you can either get by downloading Intel Native Development Experience, or you can download this directly as the Intel Graphics Performance Analyzers, which includes these three. Um, actually, there's four tools, but that's a, there's a new one called Frame Debugger, I guess I forgot. Intel Platform Analyzer, Intel System Analyzer, and Intel Frame Analyzer. And there's a bunch of tools that have nothing to do with performance analysis that are in there. But yes? Are these only for x86 cores and not hard cores? Um, the Intel native development experience um, allows you to develop code for both ARM and Intel. It's a good question, and I, I, I have to redirect. It's hard to answer. What I will tell you is our performance tools do not support ARM. And if you try it and something works, don't tell me about it. Okay? The, it, it might someday support it, but we're not, we haven't announced anything, especially not in this class, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay. So some of my tools, in order to do proper performance analysis, needs drivers, okay? And, uh, and the, the drivers, so some of the advanced features require either a rooted device and drivers. And actually, most of the manufacturers out there, Qualcomm, they have a, a rooted device you can get. And we now have a few devices you can get. One is uh, this Dell Venue 8. You can get an engineering build that's rootable uh, that has the device drivers on it. And also, we have 01.org's Android IA. And here you can get the latest image of the Android OS for, for the current Intel architecture devices, including like your Haswell laptop. Right, which is kind of nice to run Android when you're doing development work on, on a, 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 a laptop system. Okay? Although doing performance analysis there, I'm not, I'm not so sure. <laughs> okay. Analyzing a CPU micro benchmark. So I wrote a little micro benchmark here. I actually wrote a different version originally, and then I decided to rewrite it to show some nice features of not of VTune, but of the Google tools. But this is a, this is a, a micro benchmark, uh, it just it calculates pi. It's a simple loop. It's a Monte Carlo simulation. So I suppose the same kind of code would run for financial calculations. Here we're calculating pi. Okay, so uh, all we do is we get a bunch of random numbers, and then we apply a formula to it to see what pi equals. Okay? And what you see from this code here is, one I call uh, a random number generator. So here's my main function. It calls a random number generator, and then it executes some code. So I want to see what took time. Especially in this case, I want to see, well, should I write my own random number generator? Maybe theirs is too slow. Or should I be optimizing this section of the code? Maybe this is the section of the code that, that I should optimize, right? So. Google TraceView, it's right in the Eclipse environment when you're developing the code. I think you can access it through their other development tools as well. And when you run it, um, it basically comes up with this interface uh, that shows you your application, which threads you have. And then you get to see, oh, look, here's the hotspot. And here's the parent of it and the children. And this is actually the real call stack from a Java perspective. You, you, know, you just saw how I wrote my code. I have the main function, which calculates pi in Java. It calls the random number generator. And you're actually seeing that right here, random.next. If I clicked on that, you would see random.next calls random.next.double, something like that. OK? Yes? So you said it detects the hotspot? Yes. It, detect, it, it just calculates time. It, and it, it in the end, you get this tree that says, what are the hottest functions here? You can also view it from a timeline perspective. 
what, what, what was running at what time. Yeah. Um, the, there's one major issue, uh, which is this observer effect. And when I, I, I first ran this on uh, one of my Clover Trail Plus devices, uh, the Dell Venue 8, and my slowdown was, it went from six seconds to 20 seconds. So that's like a 2x speed up. Normally when I'm doing performance analysis tools, I want something within 10% overhead in general. Because I know if at 2x overhead, the, you know, some, it's going to show some functions changing a lot more than others. And I'm not sure I want to optimize that as the hot spot. Yes, there is some belief. It, sometimes it, it changes the performance of everything equally. Not always, OK? And that's the problem. And in this case, what it didn't find when I ran this on my code, this little pink spot was my C code, which was supposed to take the same amount of time as my Java code. And this is actually a screenshot of not my Clover Trail Plus. This is actually a screenshot of me running it on a competitive architecture. Um, and I ran it on five different competitive archers because I was so, pr so pr surprised. So instead of 20 seconds, it took 400 seconds on the other architecture. So it, it, it actually took less time when it was running uh, um, on their cur uh, current device when, when the tool wasn't running, the developer tool wasn't running. But then when I ran it outside or inside the tool, instead of taking just like three seconds, it took 200 seconds. Now that kind of overhead, I'm going, I don't trust this as an ability to find my hotspot anymore. OK? So that, that's kind of a problem for me. Um, but it is, a, a, like I said, the, the good thing is it gives me a good Java color tree, which um, none of the other tools on the market do that. None of my tools, none of the competition's tools. A good Java tree you have to do with uh, tracing, basically, in order to get that. And we're not tracing. And that's probably why their overhead is so high, because they're tracing the code instead of sampling the code. Okay. And by the way, they have a new feature with Jelly Bean, which is supposed to sample the code. But the reason why, there's a second reason why it, it, it's so slow, is they disable the JIT. So there's a just, in, and they say it right on their website, we disable the JIT. And I go, oh, that means it's the functions that sped up because of the JIT. It, the tool's going to end up telling me it's running much, much slower than, tool, than the functions that aren't affected by the JIT. And I'm not going to see that in this tool, right? OK. So this is our VTune amplifier for systems. and. Uh, this is a low overhead hotspot analysis with call stacks. Uh, we, so you get the hotspot here, you get the timeline here. Uh, we also have a lot of advanced, there's many, many different collection technologies in it. Advanced analysis for cache branching, LL, uh, 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 let's say, uh, things like uh, are you, are you doing TLB hits or uh, translation, you know, virtual memory hits, et cetera? All sorts of things that are hardware kind of micro benchmarks you can see. Financers fast, so powerful analysis and dynamic mining. We can map to either the C and the Java source code. Uh, easy to use. Uh, so we now have a new remote analysis user interface to connect to the device, et cetera. Okay. A little bit of sales pitch. Sorry. All right. So, uh, it's easy to get the basics working. Uh, it works on any standard device, rooted or not rooted. Um, it just connects, and you get this sort of call tree here. And, um, and then at this point, you can drill down, and you can see stuff. Now, this actually had almost 2% overhead. It was exactly like you can see it in, it, it's showing 7.5 seconds there. It was almost exactly equal to the runtime that it was on the device that I ran it on, okay? And for both the Java and the C++ code. Um, and so I trust the results more. But the Java stack is bad. The call stack's bad. It shows me the right function, but it, it's actually showing me how the JVM works, 
right? It's showing me the call stack, how a JVM creates a function, and you see this, this uh, P thread clone, which called my thing. It, it, it's going into the details of how the JVM engine works. Yes. So this is with sampling and the JIT turned on? Yes, sampling with the JIT turned on, exactly. And we have a lot of different collection techniques. If you go up, I, I'm going to be there all week at the booth, and I can talk to you all about the internals of how this works uh, at, at the booth. Uh, from here, I should just talk about the, like, what you get to see and what, how, what it shows you. Yes, were you, did you have a question? No. All right. So let's look at a couple of those tools. I have both up right now. Um, Oops, that's the wrong one. Oh, that's the right one. It's just in the wrong screen. So this is this is my. Uh, in, you see, it's in Eclipse here, and this is the DDMS. You actually start it by uh, in in this tool. Actually, it's in the wrong mode for me to see the button. There's a button right up here when it's in the right mode. You always have to change perspectives in. Okay, so there should, oh, I'm not seeing the button now. <laughs> okay, oh well. So there, there's a button up here to connect or, or to say collect the data. When you connect, oh that's right, I have to connect to a device for the button to show up. So once you have the button, you tell it to connect, it goes in and collects the data, it brings it back, and here I can see on the timeline what's going on from a timeline perspective. Here's my top level function, and I can see its children and I can, I can keep going down until I see the function I want to look at um, that I think is consuming the most time, okay? Um, this is the VTune analyzer. I decided to open the tr same exact tree that you would see uh, from their tool, and here you can see uh, the time spent in my C++ version and the time spent in the Java version, and uh, like I said, the call stack isn't right. So then you, you have to push these into each other to know exactly how much time you spent in the Java portion of the code. But you see the time for each function and which one you should optimize first. Um, there's a few other views. I, I, would, I don't typically use the, the top-down tree. I just wanted to show you the same tree that, that, that's similar to what um, they have. This is one, the use, one I usually show. It just shows me the hottest function which is DRAND48, and I'm going to optimize DRAND48 first. Um, potentially, these two functions here, uh, if I combine them, which we know it's the random, uh, you would see that that took more time than my DRAND48, which was called for my C code, my libc C code. Okay? All right, that's enough, and then we'll move to the next part of the lecture. Okay, next one, Intel Energy Profiler. So I, here we wrote a rogue driver, and this actually, this rogue driver has actually been making the rounds at Intel being used by quite a few people uh, for presentations. But the um, idea here is you have a driver, a uh, typical type of driver, uh, and uh, in the end, we have a busy loop somewhere in the timer that's a timer callback that uh, fires, and this is firing every 50 times every 500 milliseconds. And this is pretty, I mean, it's not entirely, I, we've, we've made this driver behave badly, but it's not atypical of how a driver would work. You have a timer callback in a driver that you, you respond to. Okay, and uh, they get invoked synchronous and asynchronously, they're buried deep in the stack. Right, and so what you'll see is when you're running something, let's say a video, you'll see some jitter in the video, and you're trying to analyze the video, but it's the driver that's the issue, okay? So we have a tool called Intel Energy Profiler. Uh, in this case, uh, we find the cause of wake-ups that waste energy, what woke up the system. And we map interrupts to the IRQ device, timers map to the scheduling process, 
Um, and here you can see that this user timer uh, woke it up 1,048 times, and you can see when the CPU was awake and when it was asleep. That's just one of the features. There's lots of features of this tool, but that, that's probably the one I'm, I'm showcasing now. So um, here, um, I, I, I ran this. I played a video. I inserted the bad driver. I used VTune and, and uh, sock watch the monitor was happening on the system. And um, I bring that in. And I see how long it ran, and I see the primary cause of wake-ups to the system. Here you can see what was running on each of the CPUs, when the wake-ups occurred, what was the frequency of various CPUs. That's the p-state information. And let me show you that from our tool here. So here's a, I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Big Bunny video. Have any of you ever seen Big Bunny video? <laughs> I'm guessing so. So uh, I use Big Bunny. It's running a video, and I, I have that timer in there. And sure enough, um, there's a user timer that it's finding. This is waking up uh, from the device, and that's the video app. Uh, Anyways, we can, we can see it's waking up uh, how many times, and, and, and 6,621 times. And this is actually using an older version of our tool called WooWatch, because I was doing it on that Delvinuate. Um, on the Bay Trail, I have a new tool called SockWatch, which has a lot more features and is a little more accurate. Um, but OK, that's the basic idea. Okay. So um, now we'll analyze a game. In this case, we'll analyze Need for Speed. Uh, we're going to use Google SysTrace and Tracer first, and then we'll use the Graphics Performance Analyzer. OK, so SysTrace. Have any of you used SysTrace yet? Yeah, a couple? A few, OK. So this tool, it's easy to now, to, it used to be hard to collect, and it's now fairly easy within the Eclipse GUI to say launch uh, SysTrace. So there's also another tool called Monitor that lets you launch it from a GUI. Um, and you, 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 you run it, and then you can choose which metrics you want to choose. The more you choose, the higher the overhead, right? But you get to choose everything you want. And it gives you lots of system information. See system-wide what is running. It doesn't quite give you histogram view, but it gives everything in a timeline view. What processes were on the system, you can expand each one of these and get more details in that particular process. Um, and you can, um, if, you, if you use Surface Flinger, when Surface Flinger was running or VSync, you can see approximately on a game when we were dropping frames and when, when the frames were running appropriately. And this can help us determine the code executing during a frame. So once it's dropped, you highlight that region, you go up, and you can see what code was running at that time. We'll show that at, we'll show that at the end. I'll, I'll, I'll go through all of these tools, and we'll, sh we'll bring them up in my, my tool. OpenGL Tracer is another tool that they have. And um, so basically what this does, it gives me the OpenGL draw call. It gives me a time and a thread time. Uh, for each individual OpenGL call. Uh, and it shows me the context. So it, um, this is uh, from a, uh, OpenGL, like uh, various uh, uh, features of what was enabled, not enabled. It's basically your variables for OpenGL and, and what, what's going on there. Um, from a performance analysis spec, uh, spec uh, tool, Again, the issue is it, my, this particular game I had, I could only analyze when the car wasn't moving because it slowed the system down so much. It took me like per frame, it almost took five minutes. So it went from like one frame every 30 seconds to one frame every five minutes. And I, that, that's probably too much of an effect. And once I went into the actual part of the game where I was running, it just gave up. It, it, didn't, it, didn't, it just crashed is all. 
So it's, it's an okay tool to use. I probably would not use it on very sophisticated games. So this is our set of tools, uh, system analyzer. Um, this is sort of like top, but it has a few more features. We'll show you those features. I'll bring those up because that's kind of fun. Frame analyzer um, lets you view, open up individual frames, and then you can see times. You can actually recode it in here and rerun that flame right as right there, and I'll show you that some more. And then the new platform analyzer um, lets you get a different view of a, a post analysis view of, of this kind of information plus some other information to see what was running at a particular time. Okay. Um, this is the system analyzer. Um, here you can see, um, actually, th this is just easier just to demo. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to demo this thing. So it, it works on almost all devices, and the way you get it working in general is you plug it in. You, you install the tool and you plug it in. And then um, it has a few more features on a rooted device, but it's like very small features. Once it's plugged in, you hit connect. OK, and it shows you the whole system. I'm going to go right away and just launch my game. Bring up best most wanted. And it, it's going to launch the game here. OK, now, oops. I don't know what happened there. But maybe, the, maybe the USB disconnected. I'm not sure. OK, it's launched the game. And some of the things I can I can drag things over. If I hit the shift key, I can drag various metrics into it. Um, there's uh, all sorts of metrics for mostly for gaming, but also you've got things like how much app resident memory, how much I/O, uh, how much battery power is being used, uh, various things like that. Um, another feature it has is so this game, need for speed install. No, we don't want to install. We just want to run, drive. OK. So another feature it has is this ability to override your game. So you can see right now the game is playing. One of the ways to figure out if you're CPU or GPU bound or what particular problem is, is you have this ability to just say, you know what, disable all draw calls. So now it's only doing stuff on the CPU. You see the screen went blank. So now I could figure out, is the, is the problem the open geo code and returning from that code, or is the problem the CPU code? And it, it's executing of, let's say, the AI uh, or a physics part on, on the CPU. Um, another feature, let's say, is you want to know, is it the, the shaders? So I can do this in wireframe mode. You, you probably can't see that, but I've automatically in the game changed it to wireframe mode, and you can see all the, the wires immediately. And I, 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 I got this game off the Play Store. Yeah? Can you explain how, how it's done? Because I don't understand. You don't have access to the code. Right. And how are you able to? I have, the, I have access to the driver and features in the driver. So when it's going to OpenGL, I can control what the driver does and does not do. And, and there are certain things going to the OpenGL driver, I just tell it not to do that. Yes? So when you say you have access to the driver code, does this require a custom or, or at least an Intel OpenGL driver? Or is this, is this like a thunking layer that sits between like a third party driver, NVIDIA or an ATI or whatever? I mean, yeah, so we. Like Intel socks with Intel graphics drivers? We, all the drivers on the market support certain metrics and, and this, these capabilities, and it's part of the standards of the driver, and we, we access that. Now, that being said, yes, the driver must support the, that. Some drivers on the market don't. The ones for Power VR do, and that's in our, in, in, not in this one. This one has the Intel uh, graphics card in this Bay Trail, but in the, in the other one, I had the Clover Trail Plus, it had as a Power VR which uh, also works. And uh, 
That also becomes interesting when I talked earlier about does it support ARM. You add like a reference in your slide deck like where this is documented. This is the first time I heard about it. That'd be useful for, for us to know, you know with how to disable certain features. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, there's probably if you search for GPA, there's the videos on how to do that, which are probably even better than what I'm going to present here. Um, so I, I'm trying to go over the just like the highlights of the tool and, and kind of get you interested in. But to go deeper and better and see all the features, I think there are better better videos than what, what you're going to get here and better presentations. Okay. All right. But yeah, I can I can add that. Yeah. Actually, I think so. I, I I guess I don't know actually if I can update <laughs> uh, the Android site. I can't. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, system analyzer. Another view is this frame analyzer. So frame analyzer, you run the game, and at some point you say, collect the frame. And it shows you all your open geo calls. Like the other one, it also shows you any, any particular call. You highlight it, and it shows you what it was doing there, uh, how much time. This is the time for any particular open geo call to render that frame. And what's interesting is to get the timing, it's not when the game was running. You connect Frame Analyzer back up to your thing, and it's recorded everything about the frame. And it redraws the frame back to the device right then and does the time. And this gives you the capabilities of other things. So this is a textures view, uh, geometry view, so I can see the geometry of the car, various aspects. Um, edible state, I can edit these states and then rerun that frame on the device immediately without, even, even if I don't have the source for the game. I can edit those states and change exactly what's going to happen for that particular frame. Uh, the shader editor, I can bring up the open geo code, the shader. I can change the source and redraw the frame to the device immediately and see if that sped it up. Okay? And I don't have the source. It's just that the way OpenGL works is you submit source to the OpenGL driver that compiles it. So therefore, if I collect all that source, then I can, I can display it here and show it to you in a, in a uh, graphics tool. The draw call performance. Uh, so here you're seeing how much time various uh, uh, parts of the OpenGL call took, and I can I can look at the full the the tree of 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 the frame, what took time. I can disable certain things on the fly as well here with the frame analyzer to see what would affect it, uh, et cetera. And when it redoes it, you can see the frame both on the device um, and you can see it in your, your graphics. So does it look different and will it look bad? So like just as an example, maybe you've decided, well, maybe I don't need as much detail on the nameplate and you kind of fuzz that out. You redo it and you go, well, does it look good enough or not, right? So, so that would be kind of what you would end up doing with this tool. So let's, I can, what time is it? 12, 12. So we got some time. Let me do that. Uh, I want to close this one. USB device not recognized. It's 58 I want. Well, I, I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's load it again and see what happens. First of all, do I, does debugging look like it connected? Yeah, I need to reboot. 
<laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, at, there's a, a in GPA, there's a Linux uh, Windows and Mac version for the for the GUI. Uh, for VTune, um, there's almost a Mac version. It's under experimental, but there's a Linux and Windows version of the GUI. And for all the Google tools, uh, I, I'm assuming you know, right? It's, it's it runs everywhere basically. I should say this, the Google SysTrace, at least so far what I've experienced, Chrome. Don't try to open it in Internet Explorer or Firefox or any others, and it has this quirky interface where you have to use WASDF to move around like a computer game. Uh, so Chrome, that's it, just Chrome. So, but that works on Linux, Windows, and Mac if you download. Okay, so now that... Uh, oh, I have, to, I have to go to a different frame, evidently. We should be seeing the frame on the device. Of course, it's crashed. All right, well, maybe I'm not going to get to see what I want to see. It should have rerun, ran, rendered the frame immediately. Okay, well... These are the shaders, for example, and here I can see the source code. Oh, there's, there, it rendered. So this is that frame. So you, I've captured one frame, I'm rendering that frame. Here's the source code for that, for, for that fragment shader right there. And I can just go in and edit it and see if I can mess something up. Uh, I don't know, let's make this times 10 and hit apply, and it should do something. Okay, all right, doesn't like that change. Okay, so anyways, that's, that's the basic idea though. So um, the um, other things, we went to experiments. Oh, I probably have to hit undo. Okay, experiments, and here I can do the same thing. I can go to two by two textures, and it will redraw it with two by two textures. Um, and it looks like it takes, for this one, it takes a little while to get those, that running. Or uh, one by one scissor rect. Should be redrawing it. And at that point, it gives you a different time. Okay. Anyways, yeah, I'm, this one's having a little bit of problem right now, but sorry. That's the basic idea. So, summary. Um, I tried to present a uh, performance and power methodologies. I showcased various tools options on Android. Uh, for Google, I showcased SysTrace, TraceView, and Tracer. Um, um, the Intel software development tools, uh, VTune amplifier for systems, Intel energy profiler, Intel graphics performance analyzers. I tried to show what the various systems and app issues look like in these tools. Um, and so call to action, well, one uh, is to download the Google tools. There's different ways from the SDK. You can do that uh, through the Android SDK. There's also, we have this Intel Native Development Experience project that you can, it'll automatically download those tools plus the graphics performance analyzers. Uh, another set of tools is Intel System Studio, which includes um, two performance analyzers. And then we have now the ability to get devices that give you root access to give you a few of the advanced features. Okay. And all sorts of additional resources here, articles, um, what our various tools can do. Great. Yes. So to do power, uh, power measurement, uh -huh. 
um, you showed one tool, which is Intel's, right? Yeah, Intel Energy Profiler. Okay, is there anything that can be used from the tools that are available with Android? Um, there's a tool called PowerTop that um, runs on Linux, and somebody has ported to Android, but I don't think it's easy to get access to. Um, but it's not like it's, it's not like it's standard in there. I think you have to recompile it for Android and get it get it working. It's a, it was originally a Linux tool, so that that's the only one I could find. I didn't showcase it because it isn't really that easy to get access to and use. But yeah, PowerTop would give you something for ARM, for example, that that would not be an Intel tool. It's not exactly a Google tool. It's an open source tool. And that's the only one I know of. There might be others out there. That's just the only one I know of. Yeah, anybody else? Okay. Good? All right. Thank you.